<laughs> and any time you hear any parent say a discouraging word about any other kid or any other parent, you're going to look at them, you're not going to say a word. That's who I'd hire to be my manager. We look now, we put that guy to bed. The second thing is, how many guys watch the World Junior Tournament? Okay, so I coached that same game in 1997. That's like a different world. That game last night was unbelievable. I went to the American League game first for one period, and then I went to my favorite place, Jack Astor's. Got the steak sandwiches. I didn't get paid to put a plug in for Jack Astor's. It's a mushroom surprise. I'm not supposed to have fries. You don't have them at the team, but I had fries last night. It was unbelievable. I watched two periods there, and then I watched the third period. That was a hockey game. That was unbelievable. That's what's happened to our game. It's gotten better and better and better and better, and it's impossible to play at a high level. It absolutely is. I lost my train of thought, but I don't know why I was talking about that. Uh, what did I want to say next? Uh, what was I just talking about? Uh, what did I just talk about? What's that? Oh, man, manager. Okay. I'm trying to think what I was going to say next. Second. Okay, let's go back to second one's from Hillary. Your job is to develop people. Hockey players and win championships are just part of the bonus. Get the kids to love the game. It's the same thing over and over again. What's the other one here? This is my fourth coach. Keep as many kids in hockey as you possibly can. That means you make them all feel important. It's not about you. It's about the players. So. What would be the summary of all this? It's no different on my team. Winning, that's what we gotta do. But the more guys that I can get to feel important, and the more people on that team that feel I care about them, I actually can be harder on the people that feel I care about them. I can make them better. People that feel you don't care about, anything you say to them, they get their back up. Because they feel you don't care. That's why in your family, if you've got a close family, you can say anything you want to each other. But if someone else says something about your family, you get your back up. The people you love are allowed to make you better. If you show you love them, now the guys in there, they'd say, there's no way to see them. No, I love players. My job is to make them better. And a lot of times when they're playing for me, they don't get one bit. But after they move on to their next stop, they, Normally they catch on pretty good. So I believe it's a privilege to be called coach. I really do. A huge honor. I love to be the coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs. But with that title comes opportunity, obligation to do the job and deliver. And what is your job? Your job is to simply make sure the players love the game more. You gotta develop some skill and you gotta have fun, but they gotta feel good about themselves. Am I asking questions? Three questions. Three questions. I had a good one there in my brain I was going to next. I don't know what it was. Too many concussions. Okay, we'll take three questions. Raise your hand if you have one. Go ahead. As a coach, it's easy to become a spectator and get caught watching the game. What, as a coach, what do you watch? Are you watching your own players? Are you watching the systems and break out of the other team? What are your assistants watching? That's a great question. You know what it is? When you're in the game and you grew up in the game and you've been doing it forever like I have, you're watching all those things. But the better your team is, the more you get to watch the other team. When you're in hang-on mode all the time, you don't even get to see the other team. So what we do in our pre-scope, so in our pre-scope we watch the team play twice in advance. We might have seen them play 15 times, but two times we break down their total game. So we know what they do on the breakout, we know what they do on the forecheck, we know what they do in the neutral zone, we know power play, penalty, we know everything about them. Then we knew everything about each player, where they shoot it from, how quick they release it, what they do, how their feet are like, so we know all that stuff. Then when the game goes on, I always say to our guys, let's make sure we know who's playing good. So every night it's not the same. My favorite player is the player that works the hardest. Not what his last name is. Whoever works the hardest, competes the hardest, and does it right. Depend on us. They do it right every night. So you're looking to find out who's playing well, and then you try to get them in the best situations to win. The other thing at our level is the matchups. Who's going to have more success against a certain line and a certain D? So that's what we're trying to do. So my D coach, 
He's always making sure that they are looked after. We never lose F3. What kind of four check are they doing so we can break out quicker? The guy who's worried about the offense is always looking at how we can generate more offense. The goalies just making sure the guy counting the shots gives his goalies enough shots again so his save percentage is good enough. That's a joke, by the way. Uh, <laughs> next question. Right here. Thank, thank you very much for coming out to us today. A lot of coaches in the stands here. Question for you. Many of us have players where uh, in the practices or even in the trials, they're superstars. They look great. They got the speed, all the skills. They get into the game. Sometimes you see it, sometimes you don't. What's your advice for coaches with players that shine in the practices? You know they got the skill, but it's not all just there in the game. Well, they have skills, but they probably don't have hockey sense or drive through. So when, when you're evaluating your players, watch games if that's what you're doing. So I'm not going to practice to watch my guys when I'm picking my team. I'm watching them in games, and I'm watching them in all the scenarios, so I'm not surprised. So competitiveness in everything you do in life, for me, is so important. So we can have the same two guys at the same skill level but the guy who's got the drive train and the juice and the energy and brings it every day, he's twice as good. Plus, he's independent. You can count on the guy. The guy who toe drags and looks great and sweaters flop and the game goes on and he doesn't compete and he doesn't know where he's going because it doesn't add up for him fast. He doesn't play. Usually those kids dominate at a young level, but as the game gets better and better, if you don't have a deep hockey sense, you're not playing. You have to process information at a high, high level in order to be good at a high level. But no different than any walk of life, the people that bring it every day, and that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to develop people that bring it every single day. Those are the best players. I got time for one more question, is that right? Okay. Obviously, you're, you're coaching the NHL or not, but one of the things you've done is you've coached at many different levels. Uh, so the takeaway, I think, can be a value for us today. Is what have you observed at the different levels that you've been coaching? So is there a common denominator among them all? And for those of us who are teaching at, you know, teenagers and so forth, what did you observe back then that we could take away that might be a value? Well, I think it's exactly the same. I think it's you're not coaching players, you're coaching people. It's 100% about the people. So in trying to think, 04 was our last real long walkout. That's the last time I coached minor hockey. So I coached uh, junior college, college, major junior, so 16 to 20, American League, NHL, I coached it all. The only minor hockey I coached, I coached the 10 year olds in Anaheim when I was, I didn't coach on the bench, I just ran the practices. Because my kid was on the team, so I didn't want to be on the bench. Uh, what I would tell you is, just what I've said to you is, is they're all people. They want to get better. They want to feel important. They want to be around their buddies. They want to be part of something bigger than themselves. Being on a team, I think, is one of the greatest, greatest social activities you can have. It's great for your self-esteem. You've got friends. You've got a place to hang out. But you want to feel important. Oh, I know what I was going to talk about. It just came to me. <laughs> yes. You want to feel important. So I said to you, who wants the world junior? Okay, in a game earlier in the tournament when Canada lost to the U.S., one of the guys on the fourth line hit somebody from behind. Yeah, I remember that. Took a penalty. So then, I don't have a Twitter account on the I just said anything out. I have that I follow five guys in hockey so I know what's going on. But one of the things on the Twitter when they were talking about this kid, there was all these fans, parents, probably parents, sent in message, they cyber bullied the kid. So can you just imagine your kid comes home, you know, he's getting cyber bullied by his uh, peers. You'd think it was friggin' awful. Then this kid who's given up his time to play for his country and doing everything, us as fans, us as hockey people, we cyber bully him on the internet. I thought to myself, is that the grossest thing you've ever heard of? Imagine what kind of moral fiber you must have to cyber bully a kid. Unbelievable. This is the greatest game in the world. 
It's not the greatest game because of the puck or the ice. It's the greatest game because of the people. That's you. You're in charge. You're the coaches. You set the tone. If anything I've learned from the greatest coaches I've been around, from playing minor hockey, I know all my coaches' names, is they gave me an opportunity to grow confidence and feel good about myself. That's our job. If we can do that, we've hit a home run. Different game, but we've hit a home run. Thank you very much for your time today. Enjoy. Good night.